Okay then my friends, so there's only really one more piece to the puzzle when it comes to this app and that is to update the location data whenever we click on one of these things right here because at the minute if I click on Berlin for example, the only thing that's happening is that this on tap function is firing and we're printing that location but really what we want to do is invoke a function here which we will define up here in a minute we'll say a void function and that function is then going to use the get time method on whatever instance we want to find out the time for so if they clicked on Berlin for example then this one right here we would use the get time method on that world time instance to get that new data then when we have the data we'll reroute back to the home page and update the home page with that data so it sounds a bit complex but we're going to tackle this one step at a time first of all I'm going to define this void function down here which we'll call update time now we're going to pass through an index into this and this index is going to represent whichever instance of this class we want to call the getTime method on because if we click on this one the index is going to be zero this one the index will be zero one two three four etc so this will be an asynchronous function because in here we're going to call the getTime method eventually and we need to await that wait till it's done before we then reroute back to the home page so first of all, we need to call this function down here. So inside the on tap function, let's say update time. And then we want to pass through the current index that we're cycling through, which we have because we get that inside the item builder function. So we pass through the index right there. And then up here, we have access to that index. Now, first of all, we want to create a local variable, which is going to store the instance of whatever world time instance we want to use. So we'll say world time because that is the data type and we'll call this instance you can call it what you want now and set this equal to locations which is this list and we need to get a specific item from that using this index so square brackets and pass in the index so now we have whatever item that a user clicks on if we click on New York now we have this instance so now we have that instance over here. And by the way, we're not creating a new instance here. All we're doing is storing this instance inside this local variable, which has this type. So now we have that instance available to us. What we can do is say await and then instance dot get time. Remember, we use await right here because we want to wait until this is done. And this is asynchronous. It might take a second or two to do. Now we want to wait until this is done because down here now we need to navigate to home screen and we also need to pass whatever data whatever time data we get back from this to the home screen as well as the rest of the data like the location the flag and is daytime remember that property we had it's down here in world time when we create an instance and we get the data back, we also set this is daytime property right here and we use that to either show the night or the daytime picture. So we wanna send those bits of data back to the home screen. Now in the past, when we want to reroute, we've used navigator.push named or push replacement named to push that route on or that route on. Now we don't wanna do that this time. We want to pop this one back off because if you remember, this is still sitting underneath. What we do is when we're on the home screen, click on this edit location and that pushes this new page on top of the old one. So the old home screen is still sitting underneath. We want to now pop this one off. That's what this arrow does right here. It pops this screen off the stack and it goes back to the underneath route. So we wanna do the same thing as this arrow is doing, and we can do that using the pop method. So I can say navigator and then dot pop, like so. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is pass in the context, and the second thing we need to do is pass in the data that we want to send back to the home page. Now this time we don't say arguments, we don't do that when we're popping a route because now what we're doing is just popping back to the one underneath. Instead, we just pass directly a map and inside this map, we can specify the data. So the data is gonna be the same as the data that we send from the loading page, all of this stuff. So all I'm gonna do is copy that and paste it in here. So I don't have to type it out again because we have the same local variable name and we want the same properties. Location is instance.location, flag, instance.flag, time, etc. So we have all of those properties now heading back to the home page. Now, when we get to the home screen over here, 
at the minute, the way we're getting that data is via this modal route dot of context. So that gets us the current route information and then we get the settings and then the arguments. Now, this time around, because we're popping something back off, we're not actually rebuilding this widget. So this actually isn't going to get called. So instead, what we need to do is find out a way to update this state inside this widget with the data that we get back right here. So how does this work? Well, when we pop a route off and we send this information back, what we can do is receive this back when we actually push in the first place. That sounds weird, but just watch me as I do this. So when we did this over here, this is when we go to that screen. Now you can think of this whole action of us going to this screen and choosing something, getting the data back and popping back to this screen. You can think of all of that as one big action that takes some time to do. And as soon as I say that takes some time to do, into my head pops the async keyword. So you can think of this as a big asynchronous task where we're going to another screen, choosing a location, getting data, and then popping that screen off and coming back here with data. That's all one big asynchronous task. And what we could do is in fact pass the await keyword in front of this. So now when we're doing all this and we're choosing the data, we're now awaiting for all of this to happen underneath on the home screen. And then when we get it back, we can store what we receive back in some kind of variable, a result. Now, we don't really know at this point what we'd be getting back. So I'm going to be storing it in a dynamic variable and calling this result. So what's going to happen right here? And by the way, we need to pass async into this function to use await, remember? So what's happening now is we're navigating to this screen over here. Now we've started this big asynchronous task, right? Of choosing a new location. And over here, what we're doing is choosing a location. We click on one of these and it gets the time for that location. And then it pops back to the old route, the home screen underneath with this data. So as soon as we do this, what it's doing is sending all of this data, this map right here back to the home screen, and it's going to get stored in this result. So now inside this result, when this is finished and it finishes when we come back to the screen, at that point, we have the result and we can carry on with some code underneath this because the rest of the code under here is not going to run until we get that result back, until we come back to this screen. And at that point, when we do have the result, we can use the data inside this result to update the state of this widget. Because at the minute, we have data over here, a data property on this state. It gets overridden down here when we apply these arguments to the data that we get initially when we first build this from the loading screen. But still, we have this data property on the state and we can use set state to update that with the new data we get back. So let's go back to where we get this result and use set state to do that. So set state and then inside here we need another function. And this function is then going to update all of these different values. Now, what I'm going to do is just update the data as a whole. So I'll say data is equal now to a map. And I'm going to just apply all the properties as one. So I'm going to say that the time property is now going to be equal to result. And then the time property we get back. Because remember, we pass through all of these different properties. So in the result, we have access to all of these different things, time, location, flag, and his daytime. So let's go back to the home and let's do the next property, which I'm going to say is location. And the location is going to be result and then location. And then the next one. So that's is daytime is daytime. And that's going to be equal to result is daytime. And then finally, we want the flag and that is going to be equal to result and then the flag property. All right. So basically what we're doing is we're overriding the data that we have on the state, which is currently this lot of arguments. We're overriding that with a new map. So we're updating the data. Now, what happens when we call set state? Well, we know at that point it triggers a rebuild. So this is going to rerun. Now, that's a problem because when we rerun this, 
then we basically just override the data again. So we're updating the data down here and it's updating the data on the state, triggers a rebuild, but then what we're doing is overriding the data again with this initial data and we don't want that. You know, we don't want to go back to the initial data. We want to keep what we've just updated with. So what we could do here is a little check, a ternary operator, and we've seen those before. So we could say at this point, the data is equal to, and then we'll do a check first. So data, and this is a map, right? So we can use a map method called is not empty. So we're checking right here, is not empty on the data. If it's not empty, then it's going to return true. Now it's not going to be empty if we use set state and update it at that point. So at that point it's not empty so we can return just the data as it is, which is the new data we just updated with. And if it's not, or rather if it is empty, it's going to return false here and we return this data. Does that make sense? Okay, so, and by the way, there are other ways of doing this. Same with any kind of technology. There's more than one way of approaching a problem. This is just a way that I thought would be easiest for you to understand and learn to begin with. So let me save this now and then let me try this out. I am going to cross my fingers because we've added quite a lot of code and I normally like to test as we go on, but we kind of needed to do all of this at once. So let me go to edit location and change this to Cairo. We go back and we can see now the time in Cairo. So there we go, my friends. We have now successfully created this app and we can choose all of these different locations. And if you wanted to, you could add different locations to this list or extend it in a different way. If you do do something like that, please leave the link to your projects down below or your GitHub repositories and uh, we'll try and check them out. All right then, my friends, so that is all, unfortunately. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this beginner's course for Flutter, but there is so much more to Flutter than this. And what I suggest you do is maybe read the docs and also check out this cookbook on the Flutter website for more ideas. So I strongly encourage this. I'm gonna leave this link down below so you can check it out in your own time. And also I will be doing another series or two in the future and maybe create a Flutter app with Firebase as the back end. So stay tuned for that. And I might also do another series about testing Flutter apps as well. Unit testing, widget testing, that kind of thing. Now, if you do enjoy these videos and you want to support, please like and share the videos. I really appreciate that. And if you really like them, feel free to join the channel by clicking this button right here. Should also be down below the video. It's just 99 pence or cents per month and you get these cool little badges as well. But anyway, that's it. Thanks once again for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it and I'm gonna see you all in the very next series.